Surprisingly enough, we've done quite a lot of differentials. We've done a hypercycloid differential, we've done a differential made out of free wheels, and we did a differential based on a planetary gear system that could be easily converted into a constantly variable transmission. So differentials are fascinating things. One thing we haven't done is a bevel differential, which is pretty much standard that you see on most cars. There's another kind of differential you see on lots of cars. So, for instance, Rolls-Royce used to use it. I believe Toyota used it, and I think Lancia used it as well, called the spur gear differential. What's interesting about the spur gear differential is it's really easy to make. If you want to model it, you can model it in Tinkercad using just Tinkercad primitives. And so, because I'm going to do this, of course, what I did was turn to Tinkercad. So I turned to Tinkercad and I drew this, which is the whole assembly in one piece. Now let's take it to parts a bit. Remove the frame by taking off the clips and we can see the central bit. That small bevel gear is the drive for the drive handle. Let's remove that. And there is the heart of the machine. If we take away the drive flanges and the big bevel gear, which is a drive flange, remove the spaces from the clips that hold on the top, and we can see what it's actually like on that main carriage. It's composed, really, of two sun gears and six planet gears. The sun gears fit in the centre and have a spacer between them to hold them apart, and those planet gears, as you can see, are in the opposite directions, but they're exactly the same, just one is twisted around, and those are the parts to be able to make this spur gear differential. You put them together back again in fast frame, you'll see how they all actually just fit back together with the sun gears contra-rotated. Put the top on, replace the clips and put the spaces in and we're getting back to more or less where we started. On with the drive bevel and then the connection flanges, the drive gear itself and we can rest it back in the frame and that is the spur gear differential. Once we've printed it, there are the parts. Now to put this together is pretty much exactly what we saw in the animation. There's the main carriage, and I've glued the bevel gear, the large bevel gear, onto the bottom of the main carriage and put one of the spur gears on there. There are three sets. Actually, it'll work well with one. Three sets just spreads the load. One of these goes in that direction, and the other one is reversed and slots on in the opposite direction so that there's a crossover between the two. And once they're on, they should be free to spin, and then we add the others. Now we take one of the sun gears, and with the long axle pointing outwards, you feed it right the way through between those spur gears that you've just added. And it should be free to spin. Now there are two spacers, one short, one long. Take the long spacer and just pop it onto that centre sun gear, then put that to one side. Take the other sun gear, and this time the cap, and the cap's got these little flanges on. It goes on with the little flange facing the sun gear, then that sun gear fits onto there, and then we clip those up right on. When you put the clips on, give it a quick test, and it should spin everything freely. Now we can drop it into its frame, that way around. Oops, my mistake. A spacer goes on here, this small spacer. So pop that small spacer on, then drop it into its frame. Add the flange connectors, don't push it on too tight, otherwise you'll lock it to the frame, glue them on, and then add the clip on there to hold it into the frame and do that both times. For the drive, glue the small bevel gear onto the axle, that side, not that side, quite close against a little sort of dip in it. Pop it in there, there's the clip, glue the clip on there, and the handle glues on there by sliding onto there. Turn the handle, and that's it working. Right. So, of course, our drive is driving the carriage. Now, you quite often see these with the gear on the main outside of the carriage and the whole thing shrunk down like a pancake. I just chose this because I like it and it's easy to demonstrate. But if I hold it and turn the handle, of course, what it does is drive the carriage and drive these two output flanges, which will be connected to wheels or whatever. Those differentials are all about splitting power or combining power from one shaft to two shafts or vice versa. Now with the differential, of course, something very interesting happens. As I turn that and apply a braking force to this side, then, of course, that side keeps on turning. It's exactly what you want them to do. And equally, of course, the same is true on the opposite way. If I hold this side, this side will still turn, 
as it is supposed to do. So that is a demonstration, a nice demonstration of a spur gear differential that's really easy to make from basic primitives. I mean, it's astounding what you can do on Tinkercad if you just explore it a little bit. Oh, incidentally, they also rotate in opposite directions. Um, if you explore it a little bit and design stuff up for yourself. I will, of course, put this onto Thingiverse should anybody want these files. Feel free to modify them, feel free to reuse them, feel free to explore them, because I feel there's a lot of really interesting different things that could be done with something like, like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.